Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Salar Khan YouTube channel. And today we start the next chapter. The chapter number 2. And chapter number 2 is about what? Chapter 2. It's about LTI systems. And what are LTI systems? These are linear time invariant systems in short they are called what LTI systems a very very important class of systems LTI systems okay so this is the whole discussion on chapter number two and most probably the following also is based on LTI systems <coughs> Now, as the name suggests, the LTI systems has to be linear it, and it has to be time invariant. And again, for a linear, it should follow the property of superposition. And the superposition property states what? that it should follow the law of additivity it should follow the law of homogeneity for a system to be time invariant the delay in input should be reflected as a delay in output this is something that you know from the previous videos if you don't know these you should know them. Coming into LTI systems, you should know what a linear system is, what a time invariant system is. Fine. So, LTI system is a combination of a linear and a time invariant system. The representation is again the same as we did. If x of t is, is your input, you provide it to your system. In this case, you have a continuous time LTI the output would be y of t. If the input is x of n, you provide it to a discrete time LTI system, the output would be y of n. This is the same. Find the same representations. In LTI systems, what is the basic thing that we need to do is to represent any given signal in terms of a basic signal. What we would be focusing on is this thing. Represent any general signal in terms of a basic signal. And what are those basic signals? We have the exponential signal, sinusoidal, unit impulse, unit step. In our case, we would be taking the unit impulse signal that is we would be representing our signal in terms of unit impulse signal by using the very important property of this unit impulse that we have already studied that is the sampling property or it is also called the sifting property so by using this property we would be Doing what? We would be gen we would be dividing this our signal. We would be representing it in terms of the impulse signal. Fine. Okay. Let's say what the book states. Let me take the book. The major use of LTI system is that it possesses the superposition. So if we can represent the input to an LTI system in terms of linear combination of a set of basic signals. So, the output would be what? Then we can use the superposition to compute the output of the system. That is in terms of the responses to the basic signal. Fine. And the basic signal in our case would be uh, the unit impulse signal. As uh, you know, over here they have taken an example to, to tell you. Uh, let me draw this wait a minute x of n is given x of n 
and how is it so let me draw it over here this is your n axis fine at minus 4 it has a value downwards at minus 3 and minus 2 it has a value upwards at minus 1 it's again downwards at 0 and 1 it's again upwards at 2 at 3 downwards and then at 4 we have a little upwards and the rest is 0 fine so now what do you do is in this case you are asked to represent this particular signal in terms of the basic signal and what is the basic signal is the impulse signal so we know that we know that sorry we know what to do if you multiply this given signal with an impulse so it will give you the value of this signal at the point where the impulse is located we have seen this in the sampling property what is that property if you multiply let's say I need at minus 4 so if I multiply this signal x of n with an impulse located at this particular value so at minus 4 I need it so I need to have it as an n plus 4 because the original impulse is located at 0 to shift it to the left I would have an n plus 4 so this would give me what this would give me x of minus 4 at n equal to minus 4 and it would give me 0 when n is not equal to minus 4 so this is your case you have to multiply the signal with an impulse it would give you the the value of the signal at that particular point where the impulse is located this is the sampling property I have an I have a separate video on this that is I believe in the discrete time domain I'll try to give the link in the description okay it's already present in the playlist you most probably have watched that well uh, I believe uh, uh, some some sort of a mistake in the book is that they take the value as well let's say I need the value at x of minus 3 so they have written it as x of minus 3 well it should have been x of n it should not have been x of minus 3 but the book has done it so I would write it like this the basic method is x of n into the impulse so you have x of minus 3 into delta of n plus 3 it would give you x of minus 3 at n equal to minus 3 and it would be 0 otherwise fine similarly for others if you have for 0 so you multiply the function x of n where the book has it x of 0 with delta of n this would give you x of 0 at n equal to 0 and it would give you 0 otherwise you need it at 1 so if you have x of 1 you then have x delta of n minus 1 now you're shifting it to the right you're delaying it so this would give you x of 1 where at n equal to 1 and it will give you 0 at n not equal to 1 similarly for others you can have what would be let's say for 4 so x of 4 would be what if you have x of 4 multiplied with delta of n minus 4 this would give you x of 4 at n equal to 4 it will give you 0 and not equal to 4 so if I write it generally if I write it in a composed method so let's say I write it generally no not generally overall overall this was our x of n representation well this is what this should be x of n okay the book has it x of the value of the function but this should be x of n okay so now x of n so I could write this x of n as what 
as this x of negative 3 I hope you can see it okay x of negative 3 into delta of n plus 3 fine then you sum it with plus plus well I have not written it uh, these I have not written the whole so I would be writing the whole okay if you have x of minus 4 you have to multiply it with delta of n plus 4 then minus 3 is done then you have minus 2 so you have x of minus 2 with a delta of n plus 2 then you have x of minus 1 so you multiply it with delta of n plus 1 then x of 0 so you multiply it with delta of n now x of 1 so multiply it with delta of n minus 1 then plus x of 2 would be multiplied with delta of n minus 2 x of 3 would be multiplied with delta of n minus 3 and plus finally x of 4 to be multiplied with delta of n minus 4. So this is our signal which is lying in the range of minus 4 and plus 4. For any general signal, for any general signal, I would write it generally. Now this, we have represented our given signal x of n in terms of the impulse signal, shifted impulses. So if you have, this was our particular x of n. If you have any general signal x of n, how would you represent it? So have a look. Let me introduce another variable k. So inside the parenthesis, let's say it's k. So you have x of k. You multiply it with delta of n. So have a look. When you have a negative of k, you have a positive over here. When you have a positive in the x, you have a negative in the impulse. So which means you have a delta of n minus k. And now have a look. You are summing it from one end of the signal to another end of the signal. So generally, generally I would be writing is what? I would be writing it as k running from negative infinity to positive infinity. And this is what we have to do. If we can represent our input in this particular manner, we can represent our output of the LDI system in this particular manner. And how is that? So we need one another parameter that is the impulse response. We study it in the next video. This particular thing that I have written, this is the sampling property or the shifting property of the system, which I already had covered in the, in the continuous time domain. So I believe that's all about it. Okay, This is the shifting property of the discrete time unit impulse signal. So we don't have any other point. Okay. So let me finish this video over here. See you in the next lecture uh, very soon inshallah. Till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you as well. Goodbye.